What's going on everybody? Jim Mint here back again with another Omnibus haul. Got a nice mix of things going on here. Got some manga, got some comics. We've got some stuff from our friends at Organic Price Books. Big shout out to them. That's where I get most of the books that I get. Uh, you can use code GEMMINT. Saves you two bucks every time you order there. And then we got uh, something from Dynamite as well. We'll get into it. Let's just start with the Fist of the North Star Volume 5. I did a review for Volume 1. And then I kept on reading it, but I haven't been doing the individual volume reviews. Uh, $20 book. Let's take a look at what it contains. And I mean, let me know, should I be reviewing these every volume? All right, guys. So Fist of the North Star, volume five, story by Brunson, art by Tetsu Hara. So I have been picking these up, like I said, and reading them. It's been a little while since I read volume four, but I really dig this series. This post-apocalyptic feels like 80s and 90s, uh, supernatural powers. So it's been a little minute. Let's jump through here. Volume 5 it does contain the chapters here. You have Kenshiro here. And he's part of these brothers that have mastered this art, this fighting style. So what you have is epic fighting scenes. He comes up across these new villains. He has to hunt down his brothers. And he's always super cool, calm, and collective. Basically defeats any enemy he faces. And with his style... He hits them in their pressure points and it causes them to explode. But then there are other variations of the style, like his brother can put his fingers like right through you instead of hitting a pressure point. So it's been a while since I read the fourth deluxe edition. I might have to even glance at that before I jump into this one. But epic artwork, amazing fight scenes. You got that supernatural element. It's the same type of style in manga, I, say, I would say, as Berserk. So I guess that's why I'm into it. You can see Kansharo, he's got those puncture wounds there. But yeah, I'm going to have to read this and, and get back familiar with it because I'm going through it and I'm realizing, man, don't remember where I'm at. All right, y'all, next up, we got the big boy, the Spawn Compendium Volume 3. What does this collect? Issues 101 through 150, $60 cover price. Now, Todd McFarlane did announce the fifth volume for his deluxe editions, the slipcase hardcovers. And everybody is assuming, I think it was even rumored, that he was going to reprint uh, volumes one through four. I'm a buyer for those. But if you want material now, you could pick this up. If you don't collect those hardcovers and you want like this, like a trade paperback, this might be for you. Let's take a look at the artwork while we have it until them deluxe editions come out. All right, y'all, Greg Capullo artwork. It looks like a recolored version on the cover of the Compendium Volume 3. Here goes your spine, of course. Dope artwork on the back. Man, this is like me getting into comics for the first time. We're at 150 issues in now. Let's take a look at the art and how this is collected. Here we have the credits. Just jumps right into it. So no covers, right? But um, I believe the deluxe editions did have those. I remember this. What is this? Issue uh, 101, right? That super fine detail back in the day with McFarlane and Capullo would do it. Crazy paneling. I love always putting extra attention to the page itself and not necessarily just the art within the panel. I don't remember where the hell we're at in the story with this. I definitely am up for a Spawn reread. If they start doing those deluxe editions, well, I guess they are gonna. Uh, I'll have to reread it because I feel like this is around the time where Wanda has twins because I feel like that was a milestone issue or so. And that becomes this whole big Armageddon type of storyline. Damn. Crazy art. Awesome paneling. It's double page spread with Violator. Oh, I remember that guy. It's Freak, wasn't it? Flip to another double page spread. Dang. Yeah, man. <laughs> spawn is the shit, man. Jason Wynn. Okay. Well, with the clown face spawn here. Or uh, clown here. I'll get into the bag with the whole angel wings thing. Got some Redeemer action. That was amazing, man. Fighting the werewolves. So there we go, man. Just flashing through some of the artwork. It's been so long since I've read this material. I had the whole run in single issues, and I did a, um, a whole read-through. I had one through 252. Got to do another read-through, man. Spawn. 
Next up, this was from Dynamite Entertainment, their Elvira Classic Omnibus Volume 1. Uh, they do have a Volume 2 that they're crowdfunding right now on Indiegogo. I'm going to put a link for that in the description. If you already own this or if you're considering it, they actually have this on the Indiegogo as well. So you can get the new Volume 2 plus Volume 1. Let's flip through Volume 1, take a look at what you're getting, and uh, support them on Volume 2, man. Shout out to Nick Barucci, Dynamite Entertainment. All right, and on to the Elvira, Mistress of the Dark Classic Years Omnibus. Here we have the front of the dust jacket. Here's the spine, Volume 1, and the back here. So this retails $50. The inside of the dust jacket just has some Elvira artwork. Here we have the actual hardcover with that black background, similar graphics. We got the skull with wings on the back. All right, so let's open up to this. This is what you would consider a standard size hardcover. Got a forward by Richard Howell. Now, this is not stuff that I read growing up as a kid. I'm sure there is uh, that audience that this is nostalgic for them, you know, just like how uh, one of these books coming up in the hall is nostalgic for me. But look, jumps up right into the beginning, black and white Paul Dini stuff here. Man, the artwork is really dope. So it's got that distinct Paul Dini style. Classic Elvira stuff. Let's see actually what it collects. I forgot we didn't mention that yet, right? So, all right, so it's issues one through 10 right here. Then we got 11 through 20, so 25 issues. Plus you have a bonus, issue 27, issue six, text story. And we'll see if there's any other bonuses. All right, so 25 issues of classic Elvira stuff. As you can see, black and white. Great looking artwork though. All right, all right, let's see what's in the back. It does have a ribbon as well, y'all. So it's got that built-in bookmark. Right there, right there, so that's pretty classy. All right, so yeah, you have an afterword here. Some promotional material, Ouija board, there we go. All right, y'all, check this out. We have Berserk, the Deluxe Edition, Volume 11. I am not going to do overhead shots of this because I'm like three uh, quarters of the way done and I'm going to do a whole review on it. So that'll probably come out in a couple days, if not the next day after you see this. Uh, it's here. It feels better like the original uh, earlier volumes as far as like the texturing. Love this Deluxe Edition. It might be one of the best ones besides like the Eclipse or something, but we'll get into that thoroughly in the review. All right, y'all, on to the Omnibus from DC Comics. We have the Justice League New 52 Omnibus Volume 2. This one started off with the Jim Lee goodness, and I think we changed creators. Yeah, Jeff Johns, Jason Fabok, Ivan Reyes, and David Finch, all-star cast of creators. Let's flip through this, see what you get, see what it contains. We'll stretch that spine, and we'll be back. <laughs> All right, here we go. Jason Fabok on the dust jacket here. Omnibus Volume 2 for the New 52 Justice League. Volume 1 starts off with Jim Lee, and then... We move on to this creative team. Here is the back. So this collects Forever Evil, issues one through seven, Justice League 23.4, and then 24 through 50, but it also has Justice League of America 7.4, DC Sneak Peek 1, Justice League Dark Side War Batman issue one, Flash issue one, Superman issue one, and Green Lantern issue one, Shazam, Lex Luthor, and special number one, plus DC Rebirth issue one. Retails $150. Interior of the dust jacket, just giving a biography on the creative team. Before I show you guys the art on the hardcover, we're gonna stretch that spine out. You wanna lay the book flat down, move and flip through some pages on each side to the next so you can kinda get the glue from the spine to settle and loosen up a little bit to prevent long-term damage on the book. I do it like once or twice. Figure I'd do it before we spread this thing out. Already seeing a glimpse of some of the artwork. And here we go, awesome double page spread artwork for the actual hardcover. Dark side, I don't remember the villain here. I don't know how far I read into this series. I may have only got through the absolute, which was probably what, like the first 10 or 12 issues. And I did read the Dark Side War Saga Omni. So I've read some stuff that's collected in here. It does have a table of contents. You got an introduction here by Jeff Johns. So what DC likes to do is give you the virgin cover of each issue prior to um, going into the issue, which is better than not having a cover. But I really like it when it shows you, you know, which issue you're reading, especially when you have a table of contents and they don't usually put page numbers in their books. So it's kind of like, what's the point of having the table of contents? 
Anyway, um, read those two Omnis, or the Absolute and the Omni, rather. The retention isn't the best in reading so many things. I'd have to really get a refresher to give you a breakdown of the story. Uh, so, you know, we might have to do a read-through one day to actually do the review. But for now, we flip through the artwork, see what it collects. And um, remember enjoying the Dark Side War Omnibus, being that these has, these, this book has those one-shot tie-ins. It seems like that would have taken place somewhere around this time. Yeah, Dark Side War. All right, let's see if there's any bonuses here. DC Rebirth issue right there. Yeah, it's got a ton of variant covers in the back. Brave and the Bold, what, 28 homage? I think this was even part of the Omnibus artwork right here. So a ton of variants. That's the Rebirth cover. It's got some sketches in the back. More biographies again. Yeah, there you go. All right, y'all, the last one, man. We have The Simpsons, Treehouse of Horror. They're calling it the Omnibus Volume 1, but it's really like an absolute format. Die-cut slipcase. And I have always been a huge Simpsons fan. As a kid, man, I used to tape the show on VHS. I picked up the Bongo comics. Now, the comics were never as good as the show. The stories were always kind of weird, and the humor didn't really hit as hard. But I, I still have so much uh, nostalgia for the comic books. So this is amazing. Hopefully, this is a preview of what's to come in the future of collecting all the Simpsons comics, which I would collect just from being a fan. But uh, for now, let's take a look at this omnibus. And here we go, man. So $39.99 for this book. It's the Ominous Omnibus Volume 1, Scary Tales and Scarier Tentacles. Here's the front. Like I said, it's die cut. So you have the slipcase spine right here then you have the spine to the book right here the back of the slipcase kang and kodos comic book man willy yo i'm trust me i'm a simpsons nerd like i probably know way more simpsons trivia than comic book trivia great artwork here matt graining and we already saw the spine so let's look at the back here <laughs> nelson millhouse professor fink got the interiors here Santa's Little Helper, Ralph Wiggum. So we got a table of contents, some credits here, acknowledgments. Cool, I like how thorough they were with the table of contents. Here's your introduction to the book. And I love Treehouse of Horror, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm just hoping that we get more, I guess. So you got still, you know, the classic Simpsons artwork, the Bongo comics were very similar. It was just always a little weirder, not really feeling the same as the show. It kind of felt similar, but different. But still, um, man, love the, love the material. Definitely haven't read a lot of this. I'm sure I, as a kid, I picked up a few here or there. And then sometimes they'll do like different type of more artsy stuff or homages to uh, certain types of storytelling. But there you go, Simpsons, Treehouse of Horror. Oh, you know what? Let's see what it actually collects. I'm tripping right now. So from Heebie Jeebie H Hullaboo from 1999, then Treehouse 1 through 3 from the 90s. All right, so it collects different titles and not every Treehouse of Horror, it looks like. But then look here, 16, 13, 7. Oh, who knows, man? They got it all out of order here, man. You might have to just pause the table of contents if you really want to know if it collects something. Yeah, but there we go, y'all. All right, y'all, and that's it, man. So a few questions on the table. Should I be reviewing each individual volume of Fist of the North Star? Are you in on the Spawn Compendium, or are you going to hold off now that you know that the hardcovers are coming? And I think that's about it. Got to make sure to check out that Berserk review and support Dynamite on that Indiegogo. Appreciate you guys watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.